a finish came back that had been accepted by Playboy, and there was uh, a note attached to it by Hugh uh, Hef um, that said, you know, great job. Your drawing is getting better and better every year. And I remember the look on his face when he saw those words from Hef, and it was just true, ah, this is what I need to see. You know, I just need to see this. So that's why even though, you know, here he is 84 and he's been doing all these Playboys, that's why you can still get satisfaction out of that. Not only to be viable as to still be employed in your 80s, doing what you love to do, but you get recognition like that. You observe, but you hope to hell you're making a point out there. No, that really is the target. You know, I don't sit around and say, I am an observer. What is my observation? Does it mean anything? And, and I might say most cartoons don't mean a hill of beans, but the ones that you hit are very satisfying. When you look at the history of the world, it's always going to be illustrated with something. And many times it's a cartoon. A lot of those Soviet jokes I did come out in uh, textbooks. Who's commenting on it? It's the ca cartoonist. And he comments it uh, concisely. Other people wrote about it, but they, you know, 2,000 words. It's probably read then and never again, only by a historian. Uh, who, yeah. And then he may find a cartoon that says it all in one line or one picture with no words. Soviet government. Man, they almost wrote their own humor. I was going to do a Lenin book, and then the wall came down. Lenin Marxist. And I was probably one of the few disappointed people since <laughs> it was over. You know, Stalin was mean and terrible. But by the time it gets to Malenkov and uh, Khrushchev, <laughs> uh, you know, the inherent humor of their dictating to human beings, they were never going to work. They said they invented everything. Remember? They invented everything. Telephone, telegraph, you know, the automobile. So I did this drawing. It was a Soviet school and a uh, big picture of Lenin. I love to put uh, Lenin in the background. And he said, as you all know, jazz came up the dawn from Rostov. But here's a store in Moscow, and it says on the wall, on the thing, just like we do here. Moscow, Leningrad, Odessa, Paris, Beverly Hills, Palm Beach. Right. You know, branches. Right. No, I had an uncle that some people never could understand. Gleb had escaped Russia in 1916, the revolution, and traveled across China and made his way to America. My uncle Gleb, he was my <coughs> source how to spell Russian names if I needed a sign in the background or, you know, perspective. In the 50s when the, you know, the Cold War was starting and then you had the Cuban Missile Crisis in the 60s, he would always go to Gleb and make sure that the Russian characters he, were, he was putting down in the cartoon were, were correct, you know, to the letter. He wanted to make sure that it was true. He was also doing a variety of other things. There were, there were ads for cocktail uh, mixes or recipes for drinks that his ads would appear on. Just all sorts of little things. He was constantly um, moving in different directions. I did a lot of things. Pharmaceutical ads, mattress, Mutual of Omaha, Scrabble. I can't remember toilet paper, but it could have been in there. I remember once I refused you know, this copy is all lined up. You just fill in the illustration. It was on a de deodorant, and it was the most distasteful thing I ever saw. I said, I refuse to do that. And they couldn't understand it. I, well, I didn't feel I was an advertising artist. I was doing the other. You know, that underarm smell, and it just didn't... You know, I got to sign my name to that drawing, and it's a stinky ad. I don't know. I'm not against deodorants, but there's a better way to do the do the thing, I thought. Maybe I was on a high horse that week, and maybe I had a lot of money that week. In the early 60s, um, my father was working for The New Yorker. Many people and situations looked like Jacqueline Kennedy, 
And so he drew a cartoon uh, depicting two ladies looking at the Sphinx on a tour of Egypt. And the Sphinx had a distinct, uh, you know, look of Jackie Kennedy. My father received a telegram from the uh, secretary to Jackie and asking if the cartoon might be for sale. The response my father gave was, no, the cartoon isn't for sale, but I would give it to you if you'd like it. Many years later, when Jackie died, there was an auction in New York. Two women went. These two women went to school with her. One of them lived in Paris, the other lived in St. Lucia, and they used to visit her. And it was in the library. And they always loved it. They bid on it and got it. What makes me sad now is that I'm old so fast that it's over with. It's not over, but I mean, you know. Yeah, that kind of, uh, I'd like to be around, do more, see what happens. But then I also know how life is lived. So be thankful for a good life. And I, I honestly say I had a good life. You sit around being sad? No, no. no. Get up each morning and uh, I hope I can drink wine again and be happy. If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? I'd say oak. I grew up in oaks. That's what southern Monterey County, on the west side, is nothing but oak. Yeah, and they become beautiful trees. And, you know, the old cliche, strong as an oak, all that stuff. Yeah. What I remember on the ranch, there was a big oak tree over our uh, blacksmith's implement shop. And uh, when oaks get old, they really spread those limbs. And some of them are, the limb is this big, you know, the trunk is bigger. And during the hot summer, limbs, when it got really hot, got 106 up there sometimes, would crack and crack off. It's just about heat and the oak, old oak. And they just drop suddenly. And anything underneath, man, you had it. And that oak over this building cracked one day on a hot day. Man, we walked around. We never walked under it for weeks. And my father couldn't stand it anymore because he had implements in the shed and he had to go in. So we uh, put a stick of dynamite, put a ladder up on the other side drilled holes in, put dynamite in there, we're going to blow the thing. So we did, nothing happened, the limb was still there. Now we felt they had worse trouble. <laughs> when is it going to go? So for weeks we didn't go around it, and then one night, the ranch house was, you know, quite a ways away. We heard, uh, woke us up. We all felt relieved. The branch fell. Okay, my story of oaks, I'd be an oak. That's yeah. <laughs>